Hi, I'm Lauren Pope and I'm a businesswoman and a mum. So I grew up in Torquay in Devon uh, with my family. I've got two older sisters. They still all live there. Um, and I moved to London when I was about 18 or 19. Devon is lovely and it's an amazing place to grow up and, and be a kid. But I got to a point where I just, I wanted more. I wanted to live in a city. So I moved to London, got a job in London and everything just kind of went from there. So when I was in Torquay, I actually worked in a job centre down there and then I was so desperate to move to London, I just looked, I kept an eye on any transfers. One came up in Streatham, I had no clue what, where I was going or what I was doing, I just applied for that transfer. Moved to London, um, my sister was living up here at the time so I moved in with her and then I started working in Streatham Job Centre and then I stayed working there for quite a few years and then I just thought, right, this is not for me, I want something more and I, just, I started doing photo shoots and started DJing as well. And then the DJing really took off um, and kind of took me all over the world randomly. I met so many amazing people. Also started doing a lot of gigs in London at events, uh, so for brands and things like that. And then just met so many people. Quite a lot of the people I met were on TOWIE already. So I had a few connections that way. And then back when the show started, it really was just a case of if you were connected to someone on the show, and they could find a way to bring you onto the show. That's how it happened, so it's quite organic. Um, and I met with the producers, and then I think I was filming within a few days of meeting the producers. And then at that time, I don't think anyone really realized how big that show was going to be and how popular it was going to be. And it was such a new area of TV. Like, I don't think we even realized at the time how it was all working. It was, it was a mixture of, your, for me, it, parts of it were my real life some of the relationships and the friendships, but a lot of my life has never actually been on camera. I have a whole group of friends that no one would even know. I have my family, no one knows who they are. It's not that I purposely kept it private. I just, for me, I am quite a shy person. I think I wasn't overly comfortable in giving everything to TOWIE. And I credit anyone that does on that show because a lot of them do give their full lives. And I think they are the ones that the viewers probably invest in that list a bit more. But I just had certain boundaries and I think for me it worked out really well in that I could kind of dip in and dip out. And whilst that was all going on I met my boyfriend who I'm with now and I guess what was it a year a year and a bit later I found out I was pregnant. About five months I announced I was pregnant on my Instagram and then a week later Boris announced the lockdown. I had so many DMs from other pregnant women kind of asking me if I knew any inside information or like what the guidelines were and I had no clue. I was as clueless as everybody else. And then off the back of all these questions, I felt terrible not physically having the time to reply to everyone. So me and a friend of mine tried to think of a way to be able to connect all these mums together. Um, so we actually set up a Facebook group, the mum space, and what was intended to be, I guess, a uh, a chat room for a few hundred people from my DMs has actually turned into a community of, I think we're at like 16,000 now on the Facebook group. The Instagram has over 20,000 mums on there. So it's, it's pretty crazy how much that mum group has grown, but it just shows how many other mums are in my position where we were just, we, we were clueless. We didn't know what was going on. We're all a bit worried and anxious. We also had to deal with the fact that our partners couldn't come to our scans. So all these things, for me, it was my first baby. So it was pretty gutting to have to miss out on those special moments with your partner. But my, I've always kind of had a philosophy of just crack on with things, even if things are tough, just, just crack on. And I always, I know it's hard at times, but I always try and keep as positive as possible. Um, but having other mums on a group has been priceless for me. It's kind of where, it's where I basically learned how to be a mum. Any question I have, I can go on that group. And they're also, um, they're all, there's no judgment on there. So they all just kind of, we all pull together and just help each other out, which I think has been so vital under the current circumstances. So I was induced just over two weeks early because of a lack of fluid around the baby. And I think having an induction day, at first I did panic because I've only heard negative things about inductions. But one thing I, I, always, I always stress to new mums now is, Inductions don't have to be a negative. I actually had a, an amazing birth experience. And I think having that date in my mind, it kind of forced me to get organized for one thing. It forced me to, to pack my hospital bag. And also it just, I could get my head around when it was gonna happen. 
So I went into the hospital around 8 a.m. I was induced a couple of hours later, but I had to, I was on my own till around 4 p.m. And to be honest, I am someone that I don't really deal well with people fussing when there's a situation going on. It tends to make me a little bit more anxious. So I actually just took my phone. I watched some films and some TV shows on my phone whilst I was waiting for it all to kind of kick in. During the contractions, I just zoned out. I looked out the window, I was sat on a, on a birthing ball and I just kind of zoned out. And then before I knew it, my boyfriend turned up in the afternoon and he ended up being allowed to stay for probably around eight hours, I think in total. I think it all depends on the hospital. It depends on how many people are in the hospital at that time. It's all just potluck. So I was actually quite lucky with the amount of time he could spend. And he was there for the actual birth, which was really important. Um, and then he had to leave early hours of the morning. But by that point, I was so exhausted and delirious, I wouldn't even have known if he was there or not. So I was just quite happy to just try and get my head down for a couple of hours, which didn't happen because every time she even made the slightest sounds, I was bolt up in my bed, looking over, checking she was okay. Um, but yeah, I had a really actually positive experience. And one thing I always say now is just live your birth, like really live in the moment because I was kind of wishing Obviously you're in pain and I was wishing for it to just happen and be over quickly. But now looking back, I wish I really just took it all in way like so much more and just really like, appreciated how, like what an experience it is. Motherhood is, it's crazy because you have an idea in your head of what it's gonna be like. And for me, it wasn't really like what I imagined. It's like, I think I expected to panic more and I think I expected to stress more, but I don't know if maybe we're just very blessed with a very good baby because she was in a sleep routine from around nine weeks. I don't know, it sounds really cheesy, but I used to actually get excited to wake up at 3 a.m. and I never thought I would say that. Just excited to, to lean over, get her out of the Moses basket and just look at her and stare at her and feed her. I didn't mind doing those 3 a.m. feeds and it's crazy. And I, when people used to say this, I didn't believe them, but it's mad how quick you get used to no sleep. Your body can actually cope so well on such a small amount of sleep and you don't realize that until you become a mum. Being a mum, it, ha it does come with its surprises, but all in all, I, I've just really wanted, as much as obviously she is the most important person to me and what she wants and needs is my top priority. I want her to kind of fit into my life a little bit as well. And I want to make sure that I don't lose who I am and just become a mum. as much as that is now my, the biggest job in my life. There's so much more to me in my life than that I don't want to lose. So little things like during, uh, during lockdown, just little things like when she was napping in the morning, I would, I would put my makeup on and I would go onto Instagram and chat to people on there and like, cause I love makeup and I love hair and I love clothes. So just little things like the little things that I like, fitting them in around her. So when she's napping, I just take that an hour. I mean, sometimes she naps for 10 minutes, but sometimes it's a little bit longer. So in that sense, it is fitting around her, but it's just those little moments I try and make more for me. With being a mum, I think comes a sense of calm and a sense of just generally not caring about the things that you would have cared about before. Like almost if I see people arguing over small things, I just, you know, I just think we don't know how long we're here for. Every, everyone becomes more precious to you, I think, when you have a baby because you start to appreciate the miracle of having a baby. Like it is a miracle. Getting pregnant is a miracle. So I do understand there's so many people out there that that would love to be a mum that unfortunately can't. And I find that really heartbreaking. So I think it's just working out what is important to you. And as soon as you become a mum, it just naturally does come to you what is important.